Hey y'all! Welcome to my channel, Ellery here. Today I'm back with another late review. <laughs> you know how I do, always at the end of the line, just <laughs> running out of breath, trying to catch up with everyone else, but it's okay. This time the review is on the Jackie Ina ABH collab, which you guys should all be familiar with by now. I really feel like this, this, this packaging represents the palette. It's like every shade that's in the palette is in the packaging. I actually went to the mall this morning and I uh, stopped by Sephora and got one. And then right as I was coming home, I mean, this is like no exaggeration. I couldn't get in my driveway because the FedEx or UPS truck, whatever one it was, was in my driveway. He pulled out, I pulled up, and this was in the driveway. So, you know, it's Jackie Ina Day at the Noel residence. I don't feel like I need to go too much over the palette because, you know, since I'm a little late, I'm sure you've seen it all over the net and the tube. Jackie Ina, who doesn't know her? I mean, <laughs> she's one of the original OG beauty influencers, been uh, doing this thing 10 years before I even knew what YouTube was, honestly, truly. This is her collaboration with Anastasia Beverly Hills. Anastasia Beverly Hills was actually like the first or second I know it was the first or the second brand to ever send me PR. I remember it like clearly because I was shocked. Like, wow, how do you, you notice me? That's crazy. So I've been like an early fan of their brand when they just started. Um, I stopped receiving PR. I don't, I don't know why. Could have been a mistake. I'm not gonna say it's for any reason, but sometimes when I don't receive PR anymore, I kind of implement other favorites because I have so much makeup, sometimes it's just easier to go and find new stuff as opposed to go to Sephora, especially because I'm also cheap, which is I've never made a secret on my channel. I don't go to Sephora unless I really, really have to. Even when it's involving like new stuff that I really, really want, sometimes I'm late to try it just because Sephora is still a luxury to me. I know it's my job as well, but I got a house now and I've had a kid for eight years, so it's not high up on the priority list to just go out and buy new stuff when I get new stuff sent to me all the time. But ABH has always been, you know, one of my one of my favorites, even though I haven't used it often, as I said. Um, I've always liked their eyeshadow palettes. Highly, highly pigmented without using much product at all. I know there was like a big thing about their palettes being soft pressed, but I personally like their eyeshadows. You don't need much and you get a uh, great color payoff, which to me is what I think people would want, but you know, you know, I don't know, I don't know. This palette, I will say, um, since I've already clearly done the look, is not as softly pressed as the last palette I used, but still highly pigmented, which is amazing, because because for the people who don't like the really softer pressed shadows, um, these aren't super soft pressed and you still get great color payoff, which uh, means you should not have anything to complain about. You shouldn't. I'm sure there's gonna be people who complain, but you know. So here are swatches of all the shades. I only did one swipe with all of these swatches. There was no need to go over them twice, three times at all. I literally just did swirl, swirl, swipe. Swirl, swirl, swipe. So this is the first look I came up with with my first time using it. If you wanna see how I did it, obviously continue to watch. Make sure you guys are following and subscribe to my channel. Every subscription matters. And then uh, we'll get into the look. I always feel like when I don't wear eyeshadow for a long period of time, the first time I do wear it, like coming back, I just, it just don't be my best. So I do not feel like I am representing for my girl like I should, guys. I am so much better than this. I mean, it's okay, it's okay. But I should've went with my first thought because I really feel like I could've freaked with Elise. But I don't know, I was in a purple vibe and I don't know how, uh, what's this one called? I don't know how Sponsor got involved and I started, you know, becoming a little jokerish with the color scheme. I just got really confused in my head when I swatched it because I was like, okay, I wanna do this to stab, but wait, this, it was just too many options. And then my mind just got a little combobulated and um, it messed me up, it messed me up. And that's actually a great problem to have when it comes to an eyeshadow palette to just have too many options. You just don't know where you wanna land, but she's blended. I mean, are these wearable colors? <laughs> I don't know, where are we going? It might be, um, I will be honest as well. Yeah, she's empty. You would think that like, oh wow, a glass of wine, are you drunk? I'm not drunk at all. <laughs> 
tipsy, maybe, but this isn't normal wine. Twitter convinced me to buy box wine, <laughs> which um might have been a mistake. I don't know. There's something about having a fountain of wine that doesn't go bad for four months in your refrigerator that just will, it's just too convenient to have. It's very nasty as well, so you kind of just want to drink it and get it over with, which could cause you to drink it too fast. So I feel like that's what's going on right now. I'm not thinking clearly, but like I said, we will still be blended. Don't worry. So, to start off, <laughs> primed my eye with my concealer. I actually very so slightly press my foundation powder over my eye first, because sometimes if the concealer is too tacky, it could come off a little splotchy. So I always try to go over my concealer base with just a smidge of my foundation powder, just because the powder eyeshadow mixing with the foundation powder just kind of blends a little easier so it's not too moist, if that makes sense. Probably not, because I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Then I got a small blending brush. This one is from Sigma. A lot of these brushes I'm using is, are from Sigma. This is their E42 Precision Firm Blender. And I very so lightly, bam, tapped it into Ginger. This light brown matte. And I kind of stamped it on first, just to see where it was going and then carefully blended it in right above my crease. I didn't clean my brush after I did that shadow, so there's a little bit more product on the brush. As you can see, it's actually purple. Jackie, forgive me. This is so unprofessional, but if I don't get this video done today, the way her school schedule and everything else I gotta do, it's just, it's just gonna be really tight for me. So I may pour judgment with the wine, but we're still gonna match, don't worry. That one had a little purple on it, but we're gonna regroup, we're gonna get a clean brush. This is Sigma's E38 brush, and I'm not gonna put anything on it, it's clean, and I'm just gonna smooth that out. You can always use a clean brush to diffuse an eyeshadow if you use too much. Now this is Sigma's E33 brush, and I'm gonna go into pinker, matte shade right here. And I'm also just gonna tap into that once. Cause like I said, Anastasia's eyeshadows are very pigmented. So one tap is usually all you need to start building. And I'm gonna go closer into the crease, but just swirl that in and blend it in with the first color. I really want the background of the whole look to be like a maroony purple, since there's purple on the lid. So this is why I'm adding pinker, like right above the crease. Anytime I add more, which is usually not much, I kind of just stamp it on first just so I have more control over where it's going and then I start to swirl and blend it out. Uh, now I'm going to grab the E42 brush, which was the first brush I used with ginger that I was actually not supposed to use for ginger. I had a whole different brush for that, but it's okay. Um, but this was actually the brush I used for a big wig, this matte purple shade right here. And I, once again, stamped into that shade and I put this in the crease and also in the outer V, but in the outer V I kind of slanted it so that it added some depth and darkness to the outer corner of the eye. You don't need to swirl like in the pan, like you don't want to do that. Not only are you going to get hella fallout, but it's just unnecessary because they're already super pigmented. So you can just build by tapping in once and going over it as needed. I think I use edges on this eye too. Forgot about that one show. I'm just gonna mix into all of them. Yeah, we're getting that, we're getting there. Okay, see, yep, that's the color I was missing. I knew I was missing something. Then I went in with Sponsored, the shade right here. It's like a dual chrome green purple eyeshadow, which I've said before, it's like one of my favorite dual chrome um, eyeshadows. A lot of brands have this dual chrome shade where it's a little bit different. Some brands have a little more on the green side, some have a little more on the purple side, some even have like a little mix of brown. And I used just a flat synthetic brush and added this to the inner corner of my eye. I just kind of packed it on by like stamping it and then added more layers as needed. A lot of dual chromes though, like that have this shade, you need to like wet the brush or like spray some setting spray on it to get the pigment out. And I did not have to do that with this one. I literally just stamped it in the pan and stamped it on my eye. 
which I love when I don't have to wet the brush to get the color payoff. Like, who has time for that? Then I went in with Shugington, right here. Another flat synthetic brush. And I applied that to the rest of my lid the same way, just stamping it on. Purple is one of those colors that I just feel like just does not get the representation it deserves. I feel like it looks really good, especially on deeper complexions, but we don't show it enough love. So everybody out there, show your purple eyeshadows some love, okay? Now to blend these two colors together, I'm gonna get this sponge side. This is a Huda Beauty brush. It has like a um, silicone tip and a sponge tip. And I'm just gonna blend those two colors together with the sponge tip, just tapping over the transition. It's a really quick and easy way to transition your eyeshadow as opposed to just going back and forth with the brushes. This is Graph Black Eyeliner Pencil from MAC that I'm gonna put on my waterline. Then I'm just gonna mimic the bottom of my eye with the top of my eye, adding big wig to the majority of the lower lash line until I get to the inner corner. And then once again, using that sponge tip to add sponsor to the lower inner corner. Lastly, I'm gonna add my wing liner. This is Lancome's Grandiose Matte Black Liner. And these lashes are called Lottie, number 19 from Huda Beauty. Lastly, I'm just using Benefit's Their Real Mascara to blend in my real lashes and put on my bottom lashes. Don't wanna take away from the eyeshadow, so I'm just doing a simple gloss. This is Stilo from ColourPop. As you all know, one of my favorites. See, that's a nice balance. You got the color, you got the little neutral gloss. I know this isn't a great, you know, hairstyle to show off my eyeshadow, but um, all my other wigs are like dirty as hell. And since I'm pretty much about to just go make dinner and take all this off, I feel like I actually pulled this off rather nicely, I mean. Anyways, congrats again to Jackie on a beautiful palette with ABH. Major things, as I said before, don't be afraid of the color. There are plenty of transition shades. There are some gold shades in here. You can make neutral and really colorful shades with this. There's a lot you can do with this palette, so I definitely recommend you at least go try some swatches in Sephora and um, get more comfortable with it because it is a great one to add to the collection. I am so, so, so happy that another influencer of color has collaborated. It doesn't happen often, and whoever says it does just because it happened to one person or even me, I've had a collaboration uh, with a major brand. ColourPop is a major brand, but um, it just isn't enough. It's just like, it shouldn't be like one or two or three of us and then 20, 30 of other influencers that aren't of our skin tone because we have a huge market that um, I don't know why people are so afraid to tap into or think that there's no money there, but we have a huge market. We're ready to spend on stuff that includes us in the process. Hopefully the success of her palette will just show that, um, yeah, we can, we can do numbers too, you know. We can. So make sure you guys check it out. It's available online or in stores. I got mine in store, but it's also available online. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Until next time, love you guys. Mwah.